Hi, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. You might have guessed today we're looking at rolling and tumbling. I'm on a C harmonica, and we're kind of following the Cream version, but I'm not following note for note what's played on the versions I've heard by Cream. I'm doing a version that hopefully will fit with the Muddy Waters uh, version, the R.L. Burnside, anyone else's version. It is done in several different keys. I'm doing it in a C just because that's the key that I've heard Cream do it in and most people have got a C harmonica. So if it's in a different key with a different band, obviously think about that. But we're going to look at a tab which should apply to any version of it. There's only really a couple of parts to it. You've got kind of the vocal imitation, the... You know I'm rolling and tumbling, cried the whole night long. That bit and then the bit in between. So we're going to look at both those parts. There is a slight variation later on which we'll talk about as well. You can see the tab on the screen, so let's get straight into it. So the vocal line, if you like, and I'm calling it the vocal line because it mimics the melody of the vocal. But in the Cream version there's a harmonica solo that also does this and you might want to play it behind the vocal or use it as part of your solo. But the line is something like this. Okay, so we've got four draw, four draw, and then we've got six blow four times, and then six blow twice again, and then four draw, five draw, and then it's a four draw that slides down to a two draw. Okay, so you can kind of split this line into two, which is why I said four six blows and then two six blows, because they're kind of separate parts of the line. So you'll be able to see in the tab I've written it out separately. So, and that's kind of, well, I'm rolling, tumbling. And then the second half of the line. I cried the whole night long. Okay, we're not following probably note for note exactly what the melody would do, but we're kind of doing the harmonica part for it. So if you put those two together, you got. Now, there aren't any bends in the tab at this point, but I am kind of giving that four draw a little bit of a bend, or doing what really I would call scooping. So I'm starting with a bit of a bend in the four draw, I'm releasing it, and then sliding down to the two. In fact, I may be even doing what I'd call kind of a bell curve. I bend up and then down again with that four draw. Now I'm not talking precisely about these things because I haven't put it in the tab. You could just play. But it's quite nice and expressive if you're able to put that either a scoop or the kind of bell curve. Gives it a nice little feel. So just something extra to add in there. So if I put that in, it would sound something like this. One, two, three. Okay, brilliant. So that's the vocal line. You'll, you'll notice that that's repeated again on the third line, on line C. Um, so you would play that again, but in between, we want to play the fill. Okay, and this is the distinctive, it's a guitar part on the Muddy Waters version. There's a harmonica part on the Cream version, which we're going to mimic. So we've got It's just that three times. So the tab is two draw, <coughs> excuse me, three draw semitone bend, two draw, two draw full step bend, two draw, three draw semitone bend, two draw. So you're only using two holds, but we've got the extra notes on hold two and hold three.
Da, 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 da. And you play that three times after the first line. So if I played lines A and B together, they'd sound something like this. I'm going to come in after three. One, two, three. And notice how they kind of run together. So you've got no real space between lines A and B. I'm calling them different lines because one is the vocal and one is the fill. But really they join together. And here's a little tip for you, a little secret from my practice. If there's something like that where they're separate lines but they join together, I'll actually spend some time putting the end of line A with the start of line B, just as I did then. So if I go from the four draw, slide down, and just do the two draw and the three draw semitone bend at the start of line B, you go. Which is just a short part of the tune kind of repeated, but it's really, really brilliant practice because often if you're practicing line A, line B, line C, line D, you don't get the fluidity, the connection between them, and you tend to practice them separately, or if you practice them together at all, it's the full line. Now, if you're able to chop up your practice, and this is something I do, into smaller chunks like this, I know that's a point I'm going to struggle with if I'm not quick enough from line A to B. So why not practice the end of line A and the start of line B? And that means when I put them back together, line A and B, I'll get them smoothly. He goes and fluffs line B after uh, talking himself up. <laughs> okay, uh, but you get the idea of taking the end of one line and then the start of the next line and playing them together as a little, just as a practice regime. Okay, so that's lines A and B. Line C is the same as line A, and line D is the same as line B. So we've just got the same thing again, so I won't bore you with that. But we've got something crucially different on line E. Now line F is the same fill as line B and D, so we won't worry too much about that. But line E is just slightly different, and the reason is that the chord would change in the background. You'd kind of slide up to the five chord, if that means anything to anyone, but don't worry if it doesn't. But it would sound something like this. Now it's almost the same as lines A and C, but it is slightly different and it fits the chords a little bit better, this. So we've got four draw twice, and then four draw twice again. Da, 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 da. So already then we would have gone up to the six blow, but we haven't in this case. And then five draw, six blow. Excuse me. Ba -da 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 -da. And then the end of the line is just the same as the end of lines A and C. So we've got six blow twice, four draw, five draw, and then that slide down from four draw to two draw. So line E in full would be. And again, you could do that scoop or the bell curve. And then line F again, three times, and that would get you to the end. That's kind of one rotation of a vocal, if you like. So if you did a solo, you could play all of these lines together, and that would kind of take you through your solo if you're kind of getting one rotation of, of the song. If you were just playing with another vocalist, then lines A, C, and E 
would be behind the vocals. You could even just cross them out and not play those and just play lines B, D and F, which are the fill between the vocal. So it might just go, well, I'm rolling tumbling. I cried the whole night long. Well, I'm rolling tumbling. I cried the whole night long. Well, I should have checked the words before I sung this song. That's how that line would fit. And basically you're playing one thing, one line, the whole way through, which makes it really catchy. It's really cool. But if you wanted to do a full solo, you could play this whole thing. So I'm just gonna give you an example of that now. I'm gonna go right from the top, line A, down to line F, and play the thing in full for you, okay? So I'll come in on three. Just a warning, it's quite relentless. Uh, because the lines kind of join up, there really isn't much of a gap. So if you need to rewind and have another listen, etc., that's absolutely fine, but I'm gonna go the whole way through. And uh, if you think you're up to speed, join in with me. We'll be in on after three. One, two, three. There we go, that's rolling and tumbling. Let me tell you a couple of little things I was doing there. The three draw semitone bend, so we've got it on lines B, D and F. Some of the time I was allowing a four draw in there as well. Just kind of fattens out the sound, it's a bit train whistle-esque. I'm still bending that note, so the four draw will bend with it. It's almost a bit discordant, but it's kind of bluesy and kind of sounds cool. So you might have heard that. You might have also heard some kind of chordal stuff. Now what I'm doing there is going from a one, two, three draw, narrowing it to a two draw. Or if I'm tongue blocking, slapping to isolate that two draw. Just a couple of things you might have gone, well, he's not mentioned that in the tab, he's not talked about that, so hopefully that clears up anything you've you've heard. I can't think of anything else I was doing. If you can hear something else that I haven't explained, give me a comment and let me know. But that should give you the general gist for rolling and tumbling. As I say, different keys for different people's versions of this, but the idea behind the tab should work with most versions of this song. It tends to be a standard sort of format, and it sounds really, really cool with a bit of harmonica in there. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson with me today. I take requests, so please, if you've got anything you'd really like to learn from me, then you can put a comment beneath the video. You can send me an email at contact at learntheharmonica.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. And do come over and like my page on Facebook and uh, follow me on Twitter as well, because I put um, stuff exclusive content on there and offers as well. So please come and say hello via those other forums as well. Until then, enjoy your playing and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.